Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. We are presented by the Navy Federal Credit Union. Nobody hotter on the campus of the United States Naval Academy right now. The Navy Volleyball Mids, winners of eight in a row. And, of course, the marquee says it all this weekend. It'll be a trek to the northeast for the Navy Volleyball team as they'll take on Colgate and Holy Cross. Please be joined by Anna Klemeyer. And Anna, right now for your group, do you, do, do you sense this rhythm? And is it something that exists – not only on match day, but every day right now in preparation that has you all in such good form right now? I do. I do think it's every day. Um, we're definitely in a good rhythm. I think that we all feel like not only like a little bit of pressure, seeing as that we just tied the the record for matches one in a row, um, but also just like the excitement and the reality that like we have a chance to do something really big right now like this weekend as long as well as the season um and so I think there's a little more of like an edge every day when we go to practice and it's 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 more important I think for everybody to like be their best every day it it seems though as if and obviously when you're senior laden like you all are there's a lot of leadership in that room it just seems like there's an expectation every day of what the work ethic is supposed to be like. Is that something you observe? I think so. I think it's it's super helpful, especially when you have plebes, plebes come in, right? And a lot of times that's a struggle, getting like a new group to like meld, meld together. Um, and it's super helpful when you have eight people who have like down to a science. <laughs> you know, we've, we've been here, we've done it every year. Um, and so when you have that many people to like show good examples, I think that's super. What is it about playing with a player like Avery Miller who can really direct this offense? She's literally a quarterback out there uh, on the court for you all. But what is it like playing with someone who just seems so adept at finding the right person at the right time? Um, it's definitely – it's definitely reassuring. I mean, I trust her with every de every decision she makes. Um, I think it's something, too, like going back to the fact that we've been playing together for so long. Like, I know her playing style and her decision making kind of like on the back of my hand. So I like understand where she where she makes her decisions and where she comes from when she does that. Um, which is super helpful too because sometimes you know I can get a little like not a, like a lot of tense but like if, you know it's a big play and you've you know she's got two choices and you're one of them <laughs> and you know you want you want to feel like she trusts you um, but you got to understand that like it's not about that you know it's about like the whole game as a whole. When people watch volleyball they see the blockers leave the ground go straight up in the air but it's more to it than just that. What is the art of blocking at the front line where you and Maggie just really seem to have an amazing chemistry uh, in, in terms of doing that for this team? Mm, I would say it comes in the, what, what Paco would say, <laughs> like, the most important thing about blocking is how you see the game. So how like me and Maggie's middles can see the other side's offense and like kind of rule out like, if this person is not an option anymore, like, I need to then shift my focus to the other two people. Or if there's only two options and one of them out is out, then I have to be able to say, like, decide, like, no, I'm going to go all the way out and be, like, super ready to go on this one hitter. And then that's it, like, lock her up. Um, and if they're in a perfect pass scenario and all of them are op options, it's about, like, how fast can I see where the center, where, where, where the center puts the ball um, and how fast can I get there? Um, so yeah, it comes down to a mix of like vision and agility. I, would say. <laughs> I know it's only one regular season match, but is there juice this week because of who you get first on this road trip coming up this weekend? I, yes, definitely. At least for my, from my class in particular, because of how, you know, that last year ended up, um, I think we've been trying to, uh, share our kind of like personal, experience and feelings of what happened last year with the underclassmen um but I'm ex more excited than anything else like just you know when, when you when a team beats you it leaves a bad taste in your mouth so like the opportunity this weekend to go back to the same gym and fix it is like I'm I'm so excited <laughs> and yet at the same time if you do get it you got to get on the bus and go to Worcester and you know complete the back end of the road trip now that you're into this 
part of the schedule. Is this where, especially, you know, some players who haven't had as much on court experience but are getting more this year, is this part of that learning process where you all have to, uh, you know, kind of work with them on how to bounce back from a match Friday night and then get ready to play another one coming up on Saturday with what's a significant bus trip in between? Definitely. I think that that part, the recovery and the the two game weekend kind of like energy management, I would say, um, is definitely something that takes, it's a, it's a huge learning curve. Um, unfortunately it's, there's only so much you can do unless you've done it, you know? So as much as we can say like, this is what I do to, to remedy all of these consequences of bus rides and Friday night games, it might be like slightly different for someone else. Um, so they'll have to like kind of adapt it to their own experience, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely going to be important this weekend because we do have kind of like a different, I was a different lineup than we have normally been running. Um, so yes. Definitely. It, it, and look, I mean, let's face it. You all have had to turn to some different folks uh, at times this year because of injury and other things, just the entire room. What have you seen from the entire room, the entire program, uh, right now and do you see that buy-in from everybody because as you know preparation during the week and the looks that you get from some of the reserves are every bit as important um, as what the starters do in terms of preparation right yes I think I think this season of of all the seasons I've played here we have done the best job of keeping like what we would call like our death keeping them like right behind they're like right on it I mean like when we were in California you know, there was a there was a game where where Ava Toppin played, and she like filled that role. I mean, perfectly. I she couldn't have done a better job. Um, and then I went at Loyola with Ashley and Katie filling in as outside. Like they did a great job too. So I think it's really it's reassuring for us that we have people ready to go and like in and engaged and physically ready um, to fill those roles. So yes. As a legacy student athlete at the academy, you know, having had, you know, a father that went through this uh, as well, what kind of pride do you have in uh, being able to achieve this as a student athlete? I mean, being at the Naval Academy is different. You know, not everybody can get in to the Naval Academy. You've seen a lot of people leave the Naval Academy over the time you've been there. Just what kind of pride do you have individually as you start to, you know, see at some point later this year, that finish line in sight? I think, um, hmm. I think the biggest sense of pride is that I, you know, I, I stayed because I, I wanted to, you know, I didn't stay because I felt pressure from anybody or I didn't stay because it got me out of things. You know, I stayed because I liked, I enjoyed being a part of the team and I loved the girls and I loved the sport and I loved the competition um, and then with my dad, you know, that's something that we'll always share. So I think just like being able to share that experience with him is, is more important than anything else. And him getting to like continue to watch me play because I know like my parents love watching the team play and getting to watch, see me on the court. So, yeah, I think definitely. I mean, you and others like yourself put so much time into this sport. The club level of this sport right now is insane. Um, We see 90,000 people show up to watch a match at Nebraska just to see how much volleyball has grown. Uh, I love broadcasting it as a sport, but just what is it about this sport that attracted you to it and and obviously has allowed you to thrive as a Division I student athlete? I actually played beach volleyball first, (laughs) Um, being from Florida. That was like the Mm -hmm. easy way to get into it. But I think the biggest thing for me was that I could – there's there was enough roles that I could find something that I was good at (laughs) um and then I like my physical capabilities led myself towards being good at or it gave me like an advantage of being good at um and then just how how uh intense the competition at the net is that's why I mean that's my favorite part of the game so being able to kind of like just like block everything else out except your battle with the girl across the net is, uh, I mean, something else, you know, something that you never, you don't get anywhere else. (laughs) Yeah, no doubt about it. It's awesome to watch. Appreciate you taking some time for us. Continued success uh, to you and your teammates, especially this weekend as you head to Colgate and Holy Cross. Thanks for the time today. Thank you. Have an awesome day.